Rwanda has its sights set on Vision 2020, its strategy to transform the landlocked country. It plans to remake its low-income agriculture-based economy into one focused on knowledge and service. And stats from the World Bank suggest Rwanda is moving in the right direction. GDP has steadily increased from $1.7 billion in 2002 to more than $8 billion in 2016, at a pace of around 8% a year on average, and the economy is expected to grow a further 6% by the end of the year. But rapid growth hasn't done much to reduce poverty. Almost two-thirds of Rwandans still live on less than $1.25 a day, and with up to 40% of government revenue coming from foreign aid, the economy is vulnerable to fluctuations in funding. In 2013, economic growth fell to 4.7% after many donors pulled aid from the country following the release of a UN report. It accused the government of backing rebels in neighbouring Democratic Republic of Congo. The government says it wants to become more self-reliant. It's investing in technology, such as free laptops for school children. It wants to encourage all Rwandans to become computer literate, but while investing in the future is important, it needs to do more for adults to achieve its economic goals in the next two years, like creating more jobs in the private sector and putting more people to work. Rwandans head to the polls next month to elect a president. Paul Kagame has been allowed to run for a third consecutive term. He says Rwanda will reach its Vision 2020 goals under his leadership but the outcome of the election will prove whether Rwandans believe him. Adifemi Akinsanya, TRT World. Well, we have TRT World's Africa reporter, Fidelis Umba, here as promised. Let me ask you about a knowledge economy. What exactly, in Rwanda's context, does that mean? Well, uh, since the end of the genocide, they've been trying to invest more in skill acquisition, in trying to empower the people, especially the younger generation, because when the genocide happened, most of the teachers, most of the experienced people, their university graduates, most of them were killed. Mm -hmm. So they started a rebuilding, and they feel that, uh, like uh, the president, Paul Kagame, well, his vision is to empower the people so that, you know, if they are, if they are more knowledgeable in terms of engaging more in like scientific discoveries, trying to be more engaged in IT-based uh, uh, activities, more than just relying on the natural resources mm -hmm. of their country. Well, that, that is an essential thing to do to move any economy forward, but how is it going? Well, it's going so well. Uh, we, you know, during one of my trips, uh, when I traveled, I went across some primary schools where you know, these laptops were given to kids. I saw them trying to, some, it was not just like um, a show off. Most of the schools, they had these laptops. Students, uh, you know, they, they, right from primary school, they, they had to go through lessons with the, uh, the laptops. And they were specially designed. They even have a factory just outside of Kigali where this is produced locally. So it's not a case of them waiting to import it. Mm. And with this, um, in, a, in years to come, it will be difficult for other countries to catch up because other countries will wait, uh, African countries will wait until you're in the university. There are even some many secondary schools where you don't even get so to do see a laptop. So you give Paul Kagame credit for this? Well, to some extent, yes, uh, even though some people will say it's more of a PR stunt mm. and all that. But I think um, it's uh, worthy of giving him the credit because this initiative is actually what is driving the economy. And you see every young person wants to uh, more like... A, a, focusing on the knowledge-based uh, activities that they are being, you know, channeled to. Unlike uh, just sitting around like where we have in other countries where you have people just sitting around don't want to go to school. And he's also made education very compulsory. So if you don't send your kids uh -huh. to school, you actually stand the risk of going to jail. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, well, let me ask you about the, the, the increase in GDP. It's been significant, clearly, but people outside the capital, are they feeling it? Well, about 80% uh, of the population uh, uh, live in rural areas, and most of the development is actually con uh, is concentrated in the capital, uh, Kigali. And in some, in some of these rural settings, they involve more uh, subsistence farming. You still see some of the infrastructure that is available in Kigali are not available in these rural areas, and people still live below the poverty line. So it's not, um, it's just been like, a sizable uh, uh, population of the country actually enjoying all these economic dividends. Most of the people in rural areas are still struggling. Okay, Fidelis, thank you very much.